Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video we're going to be covering how to add sliders to your canvas inside of the Unity system. So, um, like text and button elements, the slider also goes onto the canvas, so if you want to create one, you would go ahead, right-click on the canvas, or uh, really you could go up to the game object menu as well. Right-click and go down to UI, so we're going to want to pick slider. And as soon as we have a slider in the game, you'll notice it's not just one game object, but it's actually a few. So you have the main slider component, which contains this slider script over to the right. You have a background component, which includes an image or background color. A fill area, and if we expand that, there's also another object called fill. And the handle slide area, as well as the handle itself. So that we can see it a bit better, I'm going to grab the main slider and just move all of these components over at once. Note that when you do move a parent um, game object, all the other ones follow it because of uh, relative positioning. So we have this white slider over here on the left now. Now in many cases you're going to want to change the colors on the slider. If you change the colors on the slider script itself, what you're actually changing is this little circular handle right here. And you can also set a different graphic in case you don't like that circle handle. Um, but if we go ahead and change this, let's say over to a red, uh, that's going to be the normal color, which is there by default. And you can also set, let's say, the disabled color. Usually that's going to be a bit darker. So if we turn off interactable, you'll notice it shifts to the disabled color, which currently has some transparency. You may not want that at all. So you can correct that by going to the disabled color and changing the alpha from 128 to 255 to make it uh, completely solid, no transparency whatsoever. And while it's probably not too likely to come into effect for a slider, you can have a highlighted color and a pressed color uh, where you could actually press down on this slider handle like you could a button if you decide to enable it to do that. But if we go into the actual gameplay mode, you'll notice that by default they're not pressable. Uh, so you would have to write a custom script in order to make it pressable like the button is. So that's for the handle. If you want to change the color of the bar itself, you would go to the background uh, game object. And where it has image, we can set a background color. So uh, let's just grab something there. We'll go with some kind of purplish blue. And that'll be good for now. Now, generally speaking, a slider is going to be a bar that's going to fill up. So this handle would move over to the right depending on what value it's got. You can see in the slider script its current value is set to zero. Uh, but the background color for that, when it starts to fill up, is actually going to be the fill game object over here. So let's try changing the value, and you'll see how the, uh, the main slider handle moves over to the right, and everything behind it gets filled up by the fill area color. So if we want to modify that, we can go down to fill and set a background color for that as well. You might want to use the color picker. So let's try to aim it to be something similar to that blue color over there. Maybe we'll make it a bit of a deeper blue or a darker blue. Kind of however you want to do it. If you're looking closely at the scripts, you'll notice that um, they all have source images because these are image scripts for the background. Uh, so it defaults to the UI sprite, which kind of, when it's stretched, has a white inside, and the white can be changed to any color. Uh, but on the outside, it's got kind of a curved circular black line. Uh, you can actually swap the image out if you're looking for something radically different here. But in most cases, leaving it alone will do just fine. Down at the bottom of the game objects, the handle slide area and the handle inside the little knob um, is basically representing the areas which this knob can move along as the value of the slider changes from 0 to 1 or uh, whatever range to whatever maximum you have it at. Uh, so you can also swap out the source image for the little handle here if you choose to. And you could also set a default color, which uh, all those colors in the main slider script are going to use as the base. So if you set it to black, um, it, because this is changing basically a white color to another color, uh, when you have black, black is no color, so that's going to pr basically prevent it from changing the color based on normal color, highlighted color, pressed color, or disabled color. So actually, in most cases, you're going to want to leave that white, and then you do all the color changes and the slider script directly instead. So down at the bottom of the slider script, there's something called on value changed. This is another event which you can attach methods to. Uh, basically, on value changed uh, represents whenever this value up here, the slider value changes, 
uh, you can execute a list of different methods down here. So if you wanted, I don't know, let's say main camera and game object or camera, let's see, maybe we can disable that for whatever reason. So we'll take that camera and we'll disable it whenever this value changes. So let's test something out here. We will attach the button script here. And when the value of the slider changes, we're going to take the button, or the game object. Yeah, let's do the game object. And we're going to set it to inactive, which should make it disappear from the scene visually, at least. It's still actually in the scene, but uh, all of the components beneath it won't display, like the sprite image. Okay, so in the actual scene, we'll change the value. And you notice, even though we have the button set to churn off, it doesn't do it at all. Uh, and that's because we're only changing it in the inspector. So what we're going to have to do is make things a little bit more complicated. So we'll go to the button and uh, we'll get rid of this event that we had in a previous video. And instead what we'll do is when this button is clicked, it's going to change the value of the slider. So let's change that slider value. Okay, max value, min value. Okay, float value. There we go. And we'll just change it to one. So it'll be a completely full slider. And what should happen after that is that the um, unvalue changed here in the slider script should trigger and it should turn this button off completely. So let's give it another shot. All right, so we're in game. We're going to click this button. It's going to set this to full. And then this is going to set this button uh, to disabled. And yeah, there you go. Both of them executed just fine. So let's do something a little bit more useful. With this slider, we're going to add a text display for the value beneath it. So I'm going to right click the slider because I want this to be a child of the slider. And we're going to put in text here. And let's position it relative to the slider. So maybe at the bottom left hand corner. So I want to position this text beneath the slider bar itself. So I'm going to change the position Y and position X. Let's say uh, negative. 25 and then 100 position over on the right you can also mess around with the anchoring and positioning if you want to do it that way um, and we'll change the color to be a white so that it's more visible in this background and for the default text we'll say slider value okay, and actually because I want this to always be on the right I'm going to align it on the right and we're gonna move it back over about 50 pixels I think actually more than that we can just set it at position 0 and now we actually need to change this text to reflect the value stored in there. Now you would think that we can just go over to the slider and on value changed we add another uh, method call. So we would take the text script and change the string to reflect the value up here. Uh, but one of the problems with Unity events by default is that you can't pass by reference as far as I know anyway. Uh, there's a script out there called reorderable events list on the web which you can implement in your unity scripts which would allow you to actually have these but pass values by reference where we could reference the value in this slider um, but in this case by default unity scripts but we're actually going to need to write a quick script in order to have this slider text always have the value stored in the slider itself and I think we would have to do this anyway if we were using reorderable event list. A, because we would have to write a script that has a reorderable event list on it. And secondly, because on value change is only called when the value actually changes, but it won't uh, be called for the default value. So instead, we're going to use a on update method of a mono behavior, and we should be able to simply set this value. So we're going to get rid of this method call in the event list. I'm going to add component and we'll add one called slider value script. Actually, we can omit the script part. It's implied that it's a script when you have a .cs file. So create an add. And now we'll go ahead and open this up in our code editor. In this case, Visual Studio for me. All right, so in Visual Studio, we have a new mono behavior script called slider value. Uh, we're going to get rid of this void start method because we don't need it for now. And so what we're actually going to need here is a public text. Okay. And we're going to make that using unityengine.ui. And we'll call that slider text. A public slider. And we'll just call it slider. Keep it simple. And so what we're going to do is on update which is called once per frame 
we're going to take this slider text, the text element inside of that, which basically is the string, and we're going to set that equal to the value inside of the slider. So in this case, it says error. It can't implicitly convert a float to a string. There's a couple ways you could do this. One would be to add something like a string before it and then add that with the float and then that automatically converts it to a string. And another way would be to take this value and to call the toString method on it, which should return a string, which then can be set as the text right there. Uh, in this case, we'll just stick to that. You can add whatever extra text you want before that. So if you wanted like experience points or something like that, you could have that, but I'll just leave it as the float value itself. So now every second of the game, it's going to update the text to the value of the slider. So let's go ahead, go back to the scene. And one last thing we're going to have to do is actually assign uh, the slider text and the slider itself. So this won't be too difficult. We can drag the slider script down here to reference it. And we can also drag the text game object, which contains the text script over here for that box. So now we can go ahead and hit play and it should update the value of this slider. And if we click this button to uh, basically change it to one, that value is going to instantly update as well. So that essentially covers the basics of using sliders inside of your 2D or just any Unity games in general. I've been Chris, hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'll see you guys in my future video content for Unity.